Hello class. Today we're going to look at the other exercise due with chapter 22. It's quite challenging. 22.8 in this exercise, you're going to create a file named primenumbers.dat that's going to hold all the prime numbers that you find up to a given number in the textbook. They ask for this huge number. I think I've asked you to limit it to a million. Um, as you find prime numbers, you're going to be writing those prime numbers out to this data file. In your program, when your program begins, if this data file exists, you're going to read the last number in the data file, and that will begin your starting point for finding further prime numbers. Um, in addition, you're going to read the first 10,000 prime numbers from the data file and use those as divisors for the next number that you're trying to determine if it is indeed prime. Um, if you've run out of those 10,000, you're going to read 10,000 more. This program in our textbook suggests that you have a Unix machine available and set this up as a batch file. We don't have that. So again, limit your number um, to a much smaller number so that it's reasonable for your machine to actually test this program. In order to work this program, we need to be able to work with data files. And that information can be found in a previous chapter. This chapter hasn't really been assigned, but it's very important for us to refer to, and that's chapter 17. Chapter 17, if you notice, is really short, so please do take a look through the content. We're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of the programming exercises that seem similar um, to what we need to do. First of all, exercise 17.2 creates a binary data file, and in this data file, we're going to add to a file if it exists, create it if it doesn't, and we're just going to create, um, write out 100 random integers out to this file, okay? So let's create this. And of course, right turning this in, I would be updating my comments um, in the interest of saving time. We'll just skip ahead and know that you're going to take care of that for me. Now, anytime we're working with sequential files, be it text files or binary files, and again, the two are um, compared and contrasted for you in the chapter. You'll take a look at that reading. But anytime we're working with a text file or most any sort of data I.O., we want to be aware that we can be working with I.O. exceptions. So we're going to add that we throw an I.O. exception possibly. Now in our main, <clears throat> this is actually going to be quite quick. We're going to be enclo um, enclosing our I.O. within a try. Because again, when we're working with files, we're more likely to encounter some sort of error. Now this try, we're going to use parentheses instead of the standard curly braces that we would enclose a try. And I'll tell you about that here in just a second. Let's go ahead and code up the information we're going to have within this try. We're going to be creating a data output stream. And we're going to name it output. And because it's very long, I'm going to go out to the next line. It's going to be a new data output stream. And it's going to be comprised of a new file output stream. And our file output stream contains our file name. And we're going to name this physical file exercise 17 underscore 02 dot DAT. Now after our file name parameter, 
we're going to include another parameter, a Boolean of true. And what we're saying there is that it is okay to append to this file if it already exists. I'm going to create um, my imports. Now, the Using the parentheses instead of the curly braces for a try gives us a conditional try. And what's going to happen when we use this kind of try is any resource that we open within the parentheses, for example, our output file, exercise 17 underscore zero two dot dot, that file is going to be open when we try to use this statement. We're opening it for output. So because we use the parentheses as our conditional try, when our program is through executing, all resources that we open will be closed. So the parentheses give us the ability to open connections to databases, open connections to files, whatever it is that we need to do within our try, and then those resources will automatically be closed for us so that we don't have to perform a close manually because it is, of course, um, standard procedure when we're working with a file that we allocate the file, open the file, access the file, then close the file. So this eliminates that overhead from our program that we don't need to worry about closing the file manually ourselves. Now we're going to enclose the rest of our code from the try within curly braces. And all we need here is a, a for loop. And in our for loop, we're going to use an integer named i. And we're going to initialize it to 0. And while i is less than 100, we're going to increment it. In this for loop, we want to just write something out to our file. And we're going to use the write int command. And the integer that we're going to write, we're going to cast that, is going to be from a random number generator. So math.random times 100,000 to make it into a nice big integer. Okay, so that's going to write out those integers to our output file. We've allocated our output file here as an output stream. This output stream is directed to this file, exercise 17 underscore 02. So after we're done with our for loop, we're going to write out a statement. There's the end of our for. There's the end of our try. statement will go out to the console, not to our file, and it's going to be the work done. To clear that. Oh well. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and run this. Now, right now, looking at my um, project here, my source packages, I just have normal stuff, so I'll run it. Um, we should, yours should be running much faster. <laughs> Mine's running some of the program. Let's change that. I want to run this program. There we go. Okay, so 17.02 ran for me and it says it's done. Now, if I look here again, I don't see any differences, but if I click on my files tab and I look at exercise 17 underscore 02, now I can see that I have 17.02 underscore dot dot. So this is the file that I've created in this program. Let's go look at it in our file system, wherever we have this project saved. Now, my project is saved in my Documents folder. 
in my NetBeans projects, and yours might be saved someplace else, but I'm going to find exercise 17 underscore zero two. There it is. Sorry, I have it a few times, you can tell. Now, in this exercise folder, again, I see my data file. I'm going to open that like with a notepad or any sort of editor. Sure, notepad++ plus plus is fine. Now, because it's a binary file, it's unreadable to the human eye. We're going to create another program here to read this file because it's a Java binary data file. We can read it with a Java program. But notice that a user can't just open this file and see what kind of data is in there. So it is a nice secure format to save things in. Now, let's go back to NetBeans. And we're going to create another project. And this is going to be exercise 17 underscore 03. And in this one, we're going to read the file that we've created. So I'll create a new project. In this project, we're going to access the file as um, input. Last time we accessed it as output to create it. So be aware of those differences. Think about inputting a file versus outputting a file. In the actual exercise that we're doing, we're going to need to be able to access that file as both input and output. So in your reading through chapter 17, you should be considering that. We're going to start out creating a counter set at a value of zero. We're going to use our try logic. This time they have a comment there. Declare and create data input. And in our try, we're going to use the class data input stream, and we're going to call our input stream DIS. And as we initialize our input stream, we need to initialize that with a file. is going to be named slightly different. Exercise 17 underscore zero three dot dot. And after our closing double quote, we don't need any parameter for this one because we're going to read it as input. So let's see, seem to have an extra pair of parentheses. We get some import set up. Now, if you notice, the thing that it's concerned about right now is that we're not um, catching the IO exceptions that are possible from our input stream. We'll be doing that in a section. In a second, I mean, we'll be adding some catch clauses to take care of that. So we'll fix that here in a moment. Now, as we close our conditional try, we're going to start our logical try, what we have going on in our program. And we're going to declare an integer named total and set it equal to zero. And we're going to go into a while loop. And on our while loop, we're going to check to see if the, our input file is available. Meaning, does it have any data for us to read? And if it does, we're going to set up a temporary integer named temp. And we're going to use that to hold an integer that we read from our file. And 
after we read that integer, we're going to add it to our total. And we're going to add to our count so we know how many integers we've read from our file. And for each, each of these integers that we read from our file, we're going to print them out so that we can see them and debug our program and know what we have going on. And we're going to follow them with a space. After our while, we've processed our file. We're going to print out some final messages into the console. And we're going to do a new line and say our count is and our total is that should be the end of our try and then we're going to put a catch here so first we want to catch file not found exception that exception, we're going to call it EX. And if we get it, we're going to print the message file not found. the import for that. So that's the end of that catch. Then we're going to do another catch and this one is going to be for an IO exception. And again we'll call it EX and we're going to want to print that out. EX.get message so that we can see what kind of error we encountered. Because as an I.O. exception, we can get just about anything, right? So the file system may not be available. Somebody could have unplugged a flash drive, all sorts of things. Um, this is going to be the end of that catch. And the end of our main. C-sharp programming, huh? All right, so we should be all set here. Now we're ready to read a file. Um, we don't have the data file in this project folder, so if we run this program right now, we should see our file not found message. Uh, when again, I'm running some other weird program that it keeps trying to run for me. Stop it. Oh, there it was. I finally saw it close and I didn't get it. Close. Clean it up for you guys. All right, let's see if it'll run the right program for me now. And there indeed is my message file not found, which I would expect because I have not created this file and I say that I want to read it as input. So that means it should already exist. So let me go to my file system and again, I'll go um, find my NetBeans project. And here I have my 1702 and 1703 folders. So in my 17 underscore 02 folder, I'm going to copy my dot dat file. And in my 1703 folder, just right in the root of that project folder, not in any of the other folders, I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to rename it to be 3. Now if I look at the Files tab of NetBeans, 
for exercise 17.3, I should see my data file. Everything's all good. Okay, so I'm going to run this. And run this. <laughs> now I am actually running the right program, and I get output all of the different integers that my 17 underscore 02 program had written out to this file. And in the end, it says there was a hundred different integers, and here's my total if I add them all up. So success. We've read a file and written a file. Now, in reading through chapter 17, you're going to see that there's some direct file access methods that you can use in classes, and those are what we're going to need to finish our exercise. So we're going to have to look at that in another video. I'll be right back with that.